Good morning, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in Russia, about 150 kilometers outside of Moscow. And today I'm hanging out with Dimitri morning, from Dimitri. Value of the Moment. And we are in this small village. We're gonna cook Russian food. We're gonna eat Russian food. We're gonna visit the town of Suzdal. And then afterwards, later tonight here, when we're nice and happy and full, we're oh, gonna go to the Russian oh. banya, which is the sauna, the Russian sauna version. Um, it's a cold day. There's not a lot of snow, but there's enough snow to make it picturesque. This is a beautiful place, and I'm gonna share everything with you in this video. Well, we've checked into this amazing wooden lodge in the countryside. They're gonna cook for us traditional Russian food. Traditional Russian food in the in the uh, oven, in the bricks, uh, in the brick heater. Awesome. So it's like it was doing. They did like this maybe ages and ages ago. Okay. In the villagers, so it's a traditional style of Russian cooking. <laughs> Really quickly before we walk to the main room to start cooking, I want to give you a quick tour of our little cottage because it's so cool, it's so beautiful, and it's so... everything is from wood. This is our entire little courtyard patio area. I don't think I'll be sitting out here too much. It's a little bit... it's a little cold to be sitting out here, but it is really cool. Um, and then walking, this is the, the front entrance, and then this is entering into the, the main room. Come on inside to the warmth, to the fire. Oh yes, there's nothing like stepping inside of a cottage with the warmth and you can feel the, the fire. Oh yeah, that feels incredible. They keep it raging, keep the fire going. That heats this entire cottage and also is, I mean, it's, you need it, you need it here. And I love how everything is wood, everything is like traditional Russian log cabin style. The shower is here, and then over here is the, the little toilet compartment. Table, benches, all made from wood, very cool. You can eat here, you can hang out here, and then the bed is over in this corner. Okay, and then finally, uh, from what Dimitri was telling me is that traditionally people sleep actually up here on top of the fireplace. Yeah, it's warm, it's cozy. Now let's go to the main house and we're going to start cooking. And actually before we start cooking, we are going to take a... This, this is an entire farm, so they have animals. Uh, we're going to walk around quickly to see the property, see the animals first. Uh, ducks. Oh yeah, those are some of the biggest ducks I've ever seen. Those are like arctic ducks. That's so much fluffy feathers. That looks so warm. Give me some, give me some. Wow. Wow. In the summer, all of the chickens and the birds would be running around the farm, but it's getting a little cold now, so they come inside. Uh, there's quails, there's a variety of different chickens. The chickens here are from Thailand. There's some different types of fowls as well. But they collect the eggs, especially here. And actually, quail eggs are very, very common in Russian cuisine, and quail is very common as well. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at the biggest pig I've ever seen in my life. How many kilos is this? Around 300. 300 kilos. <laughs> That's a massive, massive pig. We're gonna go see a yak over there, but a beautiful horse as well. And everything, you can see how everything adapts to the climate. Everything, all the animals have a little more hair, a little more fur, have adapted to the wolf, to the harsh weather conditions. <laughs> now we're just stepping back in the hen's coop to pick up some eggs. Fresh eggs. Mm -hmm. We're back 
back in the warmth of the fire now, gonna get started cooking. And uh, one of the traditional ways to cook in this region in Russia, and because the fireplace and the fire of its crucial importance in this region of the world, um, it's also a way to cook. It's a slow cooking process, but they already have one that's prepared that's cooked. Uh, because otherwise it might take 10 or 12 hours to cook. But anyway, he's gonna he's gonna prepare. It's called shi, right? Xi. Which is a Russian soup. This is a traditional pot made of iron. Okay. Uh, for the meat, not Red to get meat. Good, good beef. So we got starting with a big. It's like a iron, iron maybe bowl. like an iron bowl. Um, he takes some of the cabbage leaves and he smashes them down in the bottom. That's gonna provide like a, to protect it from burning. And then he added on the carrots, the potatoes, the meat all layered within. And then on the top, he added on a bunch more chopped cabbage and then capped it off with some bigger leaves of cabbage, which he said might burn a little bit because of the, how long it's gonna cook, uh, but that's gonna protect it. And that's gonna seal in the juices. That's gonna, the cabbage juices. <laughs> soup like this in the afternoon um, when the fire is raging and then it cooked throughout the entire night and then it would be ready in the morning so like maybe 10 or 12 hours later. Uh, lucky for us though they put one in but they already have one that's ready so we don't need to wait 12 hours but that one was cooked yesterday and is now ready today so it's that same process and it's full of soup now and you kind of got to go with the light a little bit. It's full of broth now. That's heavy. Oh yeah, cabbage is just the key ingredients of Russian cuisine and that just looks like it's fall apart tender. Okay, I cannot wait to try this cabbage soup and the, like, the cabbage aroma and you can just see how it's like disintegrating into the broth, slightly oily. Um, this looks perfect for that cold weather outside. This is what you want to be eating. Disintegrating cabbage. Oh, and there's potatoes in here too, and everything. And oh, yeah, you put sour cream in it too. Oh, genius. Okay. Awesome. Okay, I'll try it first though without. I, I should have known there was going to be some sour cream. That's awesome. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's wonderful. You don't even need to chew. The cabbage is so soft. It has a smoky taste because of. Uh, Though it's been cooked in that fire for so long, so slow in that fire. Mm. Mm. Take a bit of sour cream, okay. and then she said to add in a little bit of dill too, or maybe I stir in the, maybe I stir in the sour cream first. That sour cream swirl, as well as the aroma of dill, is something I'll never forget from Russia. Yeah, that soup with the sour cream. That makes it richer, thicker, heartier, which is the, that faintness of the sourness of the cream. Um, and then the dill is what really makes it for me too, because that provides that herbaceous touch. But what a soup, the simplicity, it shines. And that just like, I mean, you eat a bowl of that, the cabbage just kind of fills into your stomach and just warms you beautifully. Uh, Ribina is called uh, lingonberry. lingonberry. Uh, it's not so strong. And this homemade vodka. So the one I told you, so when they take some fruits or vegetables yeah. and they fermentate them and uh -huh. they then set to boil. So this one is made with apples. So this is the bread made of Gruzia. the oven. Uh, it's called the tsar mushroom as well. Uh -huh. And the herring, the herring. Oh, nice. It's like the starters. It's very traditional Russian okay. more. So it's a soft drink. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Okay, so we're starting with some, Cheers. it's a Russian liquor made with lingonberry. Mm, yeah, it smells very fruity. Mmm. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's not too strong. It's almost like a, the lingonberry kind of has a cranberry similar taste to it, but not sweet at all. Okay, and then they just brought out some more appetizers, some small dishes like uh, some pickled milk mushrooms, two different types of milk mushrooms. Okay, so now we are trying the traditional Russian uh, starters. It's the milk mushrooms. Of course, the sour cream. Yeah, welcome, okay, oh, so welcome to Russia again. You dip, it, you dip it in sour cream you as well? You dip it or you can, okay, you can put like, sour put cream on top of it. Here we okay. go, Dimitri. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Fantastic. <laughs> it is fantastic. When the mushroom is pickled, it's a sponge of delicious juices. And it's garlicky with the onion, with the sour cream. With the sour cream, yeah. That's 
Superb, yeah. yeah. And then the other one is the white. And the other one is the white color. The white, the white milk mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is usually with... The bread is still warm. Oh, okay. Look at the size of that. And these are all wild mushrooms. Oh, thank you for the... Yeah, of course. Wild, wild mushrooms, right? Because, yeah, they're so flavorful. They're so... They're so uneven, too. I mean, just the, the shapes and sizes of them. So... Mm. Mm. It's perfect. That yes. one is, like, milky. Yeah. Mm. It's even softer than the black mushroom. Yeah. Mm. True. Okay. So the truth is that we can drink a lot, but because we drink it in different way. Mm. So in uh, Western world, the, in Western culture, people usually drink uh, just shots. That's it in the bar. In Russia, if we drink the uh, strong drinks like vodka, mm -hmm. we do it with a lot of food. And the pickles uh, are the best. Cucumber pickle. Mm -hmm. And then cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. It's despite it being very strong, it's it is smooth. Mm. Like, or maybe that's like paired with the pickle too. Mm -hmm. The herring with the bread, this is like just a few dishes in Russian cuisine that you, that you can eat without sour cream. And this is bread also that they cook in the in the oven, the yeah. oven as well, the fireplace oven, and pickled herring. Okay. Mm. 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 Follow that with bread because very good. Yeah, it is salty, but it's almost like jelly as well. It's kind of like a, it's a right, jelly. It makes it softer like because mm. of the salt. Mm. It tastes like this for several days. Okay. Before it's ready. That's wonderful. Mm. Just, yeah, potato with dill. And then we also got another lingonberry juice. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's really nice. Mm, the pork. Oh, okay. And you can even, as soon as she set this down, you can feel the heat coming off of it. That's, yeah, that's warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah very warm. Also cooked in the, the clay pot. Uh, but this one is a pike perch. Yeah. And uh, so this is the uh, the like tradi quite quite traditional style of the pork, the pork with the cheese as well. Oh yeah, that's yeah, gotta, be sour sour gotta be sour cream, right? <laughs> yes, sour cream and melted cheese all over pork, fried pork. Mm. Mm. It's very soft, mm -hmm. quite it's creamy soft. because of the cheese and the sour cream. The sour cream, yeah, yeah, and the Russian pickled tomatoes are incredible. Do you take it all? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a mouthful of juice. Sour cream, pork, and cheese, followed by pickles. And then the next dish we got is the pike perch. There's potatoes in here. There's, mm, it smells like, it smells kind of like roasted cream almost, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like fired cream. Which... Oh yeah, that's hot. Mm. Oh, that's again hearty. It's warming. It's like curdled cream. And again, because it's cooked in the fire, you taste that kind of smoky, roasted flavor top. And then finally, finish that all with some of the potatoes. Mm. Yeah, just kind of plain potatoes with a little bit of dill mm -hmm. seasoning. But with butter as well. Oh, with butter, okay. With butter. Okay, but well, you can tell, you want the potatoes to be kind of plain because the other dishes are rich. Mm. So it goes good to that. <laughs> And you can eat it with the, the bread or you can eat it with potatoes. I think I'll sprinkle on a little dill. Okay, so lunch was fantastic and now they're just going to show us how they make the bread in the fire oven as well. So, a little bit of salt and sugar, yeast, and then water, and then knead that. He said he lets it rise twice before punching it down before it goes into the fire. It cooks actually for a long time, for 30 to 40 minutes, because that's a thick loaf of bread. That's a big loaf of bread. 40 minutes later. Yes. Okay, and again, just the porridge. The porridge, it's a simple amount of ingredients put millet he put sugar a little bit of salt and fresh milk um, and just it's really about the cooking process the technique the slow cooking process was what makes it different just like the the cabbage soup that we had uh, so that goes into the oven and that's gonna bubble up that's gonna cook together and that's millet porridge about 45 minutes later the porridge is ready and you can see it has this caramelized 
brown layer on the top. I think that's from the milk that has caramelized with the sugar. Uh, but then the final step, he brings it out. He puts on like a, a chunk, a, a, like a half a block of butter on top. That's going to melt in. That's the final process. It's going to melt into the whole porridge. And as we were having lunch, it started snowing. It's not a heavy snow, but it's a light, steady snow. From here, we're gonna jump in a taxi and we're on our way to Suzdal. Uh, we're gonna walk around, we're gonna hopefully see some of the churches. So this place still creates the Russian village. So with the Russian wooden houses, with the churches, uh, you can get inside, you okay. can see interiors, you can see and try some traditional handcrafts. Okay, cool. The territory. So that's an amazing structure, the different layers and domes. Uh, and again, the onion domes is, symbolizes the candle. Oh, that is an arctic chill. Oh, that wind. So we've stepped into the church now. Um, this is the area and then behind this is the altar. Um, but you can see something that is really impressive to me is the construction of the wood and the logs and using no nails or glue or anything. And what you can see is on the walls, in between the beams, in between the logs is linen to protect from the wind and to protect from the elements so to keep it airtight and to keep it warm in here. And just amazing that it's just completely made of wood fully. Now we're just gonna step inside. This is a entrance of a home and this is a, a recreation of a traditional wooden home. Climb up there, you can sleep on top and then also you can sleep up here on the kind of the ceiling area. There's also places to sleep because that's where the heat rises. That's where it's nice and warm up there at night too. Cool how everything is wood. I mean, the entire house is wood, but then also the furniture, the tables, the benches, everything is made from wood. Okay, so just a quick drive, and we are now at the Suzdal Kremlin which again is the center of the city, walled in city. Um, and then there's a couple of churches within this property as well within the, the Kremlin area. Okay. So we're at the top of the wall now. This used to be a bigger wall, uh, but this is where the wall of the Kremlin was. So the city was inside and they would have a bigger wall here protecting from the outside. Oh man. And this is the, it's a beautiful cathedral actually with blue, uh, the candle flame dome and then cross on the top. But it's beautiful to look at from the, from the far view. Yeah. Okay, so step inside this cathedral and it's just beautiful. It opens up, this cathedral is not made of wood, uh, but the entire, central areas filled with murals and paintings depicting scenes from the Bible. Uh, this is a Russian Orthodox Church and then you can see at the front with all the gold that is the front of the altar. Behind there is the altar. But the high ceiling and just the painting, the blue, wow, and the gold. Next up, we are stopping at a restaurant. And Suzdal, they are known for their cucumbers. And the name of the restaurant is actually called Cucumber. So hopefully we're gonna eat some cucumbers. We're gonna probably pickled cucumbers and get some other food as well. Okay, so definitely indeed, they do have a lot of pickles and cucumbers on their menu and a lot of things with pickles. So we're getting some pickles, but then we're also getting some interesting dishes that include pickles and cucumber as well. Mm. But they have a lot of good things. I think that's famous specific to Suzdal, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a honey... Mm -hmm. So it's honey called Midabuja. 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 Yeah, it's like honey beer. 
Oh yeah, it's really good. And then I had to try some of the cucumber vodka. They had pickled cucumber vodka and fresh cucumber. Fresh cucumber. I got the fresh. Cheers, Cheers. Dimitri. Mmm. Yeah. Like flavor? Yes. Like really fresh cucumber. Yeah. The smell. Like smell as well. Cucumber. Yeah. Yeah. You know immediately that's like a powerful cucumber. It's really good. Okay, so the cucumbers have arrived the uh, pickles. And then it's also served with a little bowl of honey that you can dip them in. And this is the Suzdal style. This is Suzdal style. The whole pickles are Suzdal style. Pickles and with the honey. Hey, come on, dip in the honey. Mm, I will. Afterwards. Oh, yeah. It's so good. And this is like a... It's quite a mature pickle, so it's very sour. This is like the combination of the two well-known foods of Suzdal. Pickles, or cucumbers, and uh, honey. Mm -hmm. And these pickles are mature enough that they almost kind of acidic. Kind of like zing your tongue a little bit. The balance of the honey, the dill, the salty, briny pickle. Mm. Amazing. Is this uh, Another Russian soup no. that we ordered here is called salanka. Yeah, of course it's not a, like old Russian soup because, for example, you can see the olives here. Ah, uh, there's olives. It becomes so yeah. popular, so it's maybe uh, let's say another one uh, example of the Soviet cuisine. Ah, uh, okay. When you have Bring like everything together, some uh, salami, some meat, some peas, cucumbers, and other. Oh it's yeah, made, there's it's pickles made with in the here too. Pickle, pickle cucumbers. Oh yeah, there's yeah. pickles in here too. Pickle soup. The waste of time. It's a waste of time. <laughs> Demetrius, Demetrius' experience, he doesn't even taste before, you just... You always add sour cream. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Mm. Has a good sourness to it, the soup. I will never forget the sour cream swirl from Russia. Sour cream tour? <laughs> yes, the sour cream tour. The swirl of cream into every soup. A nice sourness. Sour cream makes all the difference. The dill in there, the different mix of meats as well. This is a Russian herbal tea called Ivan tea. So it's a herb that grows here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not actually tea, but it's a yeah, it's an herb. Herbal. Oh, and here comes the main dish. Perfect. Uh, dumplings, um, and filled with a combination of pike perch, which is the local fish here, and salmon, and served with some sour cream, and then all, also a little bit of caviar on top. Okay. It's very nice, very nice. Very nice, yeah. The fishy juiciness comes out. And then with the sour cream. Okay, and then the next dish that we got, this is a stroganoff, a type of stroganoff, but not a creamy stroganoff, but made with pickles and tomato, mashed potato on the bottom, and then a beetroot sauce. You can see those pickles in there as well. And they've like, quite a, that's quite a, a cup formation. Mm, it smells beefy. It smells perfect. Mm-hmm. The pickles give some special, not so strong. Yeah. Do some a little bit of eddings. Yeah. Pickle is not overpowering at all. Yeah, it's, it's still, kind it's of still, like still that, beefy. That it's texture. Still... You taste the beef, you taste the onions in there. Just maybe a little bit of acidic from the tomato and the beet. And then really it's, yeah, it's really focused on the beef itself. The flavor of the beef. Like melding, mixing <clears throat> into the potato. Okay, and then to finish off this meal, we again the honey is famous here, and they're known for their honey cake. These are yeah. Well, it's a honey layered cake. honey cake actually too. Sorry. Mm. Mm. Lots of cream like filled in the center. Mm. You no, know, with the different layers, because cream is within every layer, and then you do taste the honey. You do taste like the powdered sugar as well. Oh wow, wow, wow. <laughs> it's amazing. And with the the tea. That goes well together. Okay, so we made it back to the lodge. Uh, man, it is snowing. It actually snowed most of the afternoon. It's snowing pretty well, so there's a lot more snow than before. And that's good news because after we eat some desserts, at the hotel, we're gonna eat some Russian pancakes. Um, they're gonna fire up the banya, the Russian sauna. And so we'll be going in there, then we'll probably 
be rolling in the little bit of snow we have for the full experience. So yeah, it's really good to have snow tonight. Okay, this is awesome. Okay, so we're back. Desserts are served. This is the millet porridge that he made with that caramelized milk on top and just the butter has just soaked all the way into it. Um, we've got Russian pancakes, which are called blini. Blini. And then the third one is... Uh, it's called sirniki. Sirniki. So it's the fried cottage cheese. Fried cottage cheese. Can you add sour cream on top? Yes. It's... Then you take the raspberry jam. Oh, then you put raspberry jam on top. Okay, on top, yeah. and that kind of adds sweetness to it too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. It, to make it like perfect. Okay. Oh, you can feel like the softness, the suppleness of that cheese too. Mm -hmm. It's really soft. You can feel how soft and gooey it is. Well, just well. Mmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not too sweet actually. The sweetness is often coming from the, from the, the raspberry yeah, from jam. The raspberry jam, yeah. But the puck of cottage cheese is like just slight. It is like mm. a cheesecake without the base. So no, but it is maybe a little bit of flour within the, yeah, the yeah, cheese. Yeah, a little bit of flour, yeah. That's yeah, like yeah. holy, it's not pure cheese on the bottom. The cottage cheese? Uh huh. They add the egg. Oh, so it's eggy too egg, on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. It's and, all, yeah, it's and, almost and, like omelette. And a little bit of flour. A bit of flour. And a bit of flour to hold it all together. So it's like a, a cheese bread almost on the bottom, but really like gooey and yeah, that's just good with the sour cream and the, the jam. Oh. And it's just so warm and gooey. It's really good. All right, so the millet porridge in the little pan, and yeah, you can see he put that whole block of butter that just melted down yeah, into the milk. With plenty of butter and milk. A lot of butter, milk. Mm. The smell is amazing. Yeah, they hot. Mm. Mm. It's very difficult to get this porridge of this contest, um, um, of this structure. Uh, because originally it's quite stiff. Yeah. Okay. But uh, with, the, with the help of this oven, so it makes it really soft. In the soft. long cooking process. And so this would actually be common as a breakfast, a breakfast dish, not necessarily as a dessert. But it works as a dessert too because it's sweet. It's a, it's almost like a pudding. Like a, like a custard with texture, and it just stays hot in that clay pot as well. There are several types of how you can eat the blini. Uh, if you eat someone in the restaurant, of course, you just uh, use your fork, you use a knife, and do it in a very uh, proper way. Uh, proper way, yeah. But when you're at home, so we usually eat it with hands. I right, take one pancake, one blin. Blin. Blin is one, yes. You take some uh, sour cream. Sour cream. So then you make it like the like an envelope, and it. Okay. Oh, it's almost like a pocket. Mm. So I'm gonna take the blin. It's a raspberry, sweet raspberry jam. And then the sour cream is actually like what kind of like balances it out and mellows it out. And kind of like squeeze that out. Kind of like squish it around. That's just stuffed full of the jam and the sour cream. It's, you can feel like the, just the toppings inside just wobbling. That is superb. Again, the rich, creamy sourness of the sour cream. Contrasting that sweet raspberry jam, all wrapped up in a, like, a silky Russian pancake blin. Mm. Yeah, it's delicious. It is really good. It's like a perfect balanced dessert, sweet snack. Final bite before panya. Ready. Okay, the time has come. What a beautiful setting. Powdery snow. There's a frozen lake over here. Yeah, this is a perfect winter setting. Perfect for banya. Okay, this is the place. Okay. Oh, and I didn't realize that, but we have like a whole Banya cottage to ourselves. So this place, it's like a whole, I mean, the, the banya is inside there, but it's a whole cottage. There's places to sit and hang out here. Still warm, but then outside also. Okay. 
<laughs> so what we do first is go to take a quick shower to rinse off and then go to the steam room. The Okay, took a quick shower and you gotta choose a hat. This is a wool, a wool cap to put on your head so to protect your head, to protect your head from the heat, I believe. Okay, step up here. Okay, so now we are sitting in the steam room. Uh, this is the first uh, first part of the banya. Yeah? So uh, you need to sit here and uh, wait until your body gets get really warm. So you need to breathe deep. You need to relax and uh, feel how the warm is coming through your body. When you sit in the hot uh, room and then you quickly go to the cold snow or to the cold water, it's very stressful for your body. Uh, so that's why it's it's very stressful situation and the body start to the increase the immuno processes. Ah, launch okay, the immuno okay. system. What temperature are we at? 95 degrees now here. Uh, we use this broom. Uh, it's made uh, will be uh, okay. We will make some kind of, kind of massage. So you lay down ah. and I will hit you with this uh, broom. Okay, awesome. First. Oh, do you push? Oh, Ooh. oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Oh, and the aroma comes out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Now turn it around. Oh, this is a real, you can feel like a, this is like a bath. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Yeah, it's warm. I'm sweating. Okay. And after this, you need to run to the snow. Run to the snow. But not yet. <laughs> okay. So after this, before the camera melts, put the camera outside, but then I'll turn it back on when we go outside, we go when we're too hot. Okay. Whew, that was 15 minutes, yeah. almost. Two crazy guys, two crazy wow. guys going to the snow. The detox. <laughs> yeah, detox. Ultimate detox. Whoa. Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh, and it actually feels amazing. Like, it's a little bit cold, but it's more like a, a shocking cold. Yeah. Woo! And it actually feels amazing. Yeah. Wow. That is just the ultimate rejuvenating. This is stunning. Okay, and usually you do this three times, right? Three, three times up to you. Okay, here we go. Round two. It's at 92 degrees. We are like half cooked already. Okay, I'm gonna put the camera back and relax for a while. Oh, oh. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Ah. Woo. Oh, that's calm. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. oh I still got the hat. <laughs> that was an experience. Mm. The snow roll. <laughs> and you can actually, the contrast, that's like almost a hundred degree Celsius contrast in temperatures. You can actually feel your skin kind of tingling a little bit. Yeah, tingling. Okay, final round, round three. <laughs> Just the steam. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Success. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, smoking like a chicken. I'm ha I'm probably yeah. like half cooked. <laughs> Very old guy. That was fantastic. I feel like a completely new man. Yes. Okay, okay. Crazy Russian American guys. I am like a totally new person, totally refreshed, rejuvenated. What a shock to the body and the rolling in the snow. That was the highlight. Uh, but just, yeah, I'm glad it snowed enough that we could do that. I'm just at total peace right now. And what a place. The little cottages, the food, the. Oh man, actually, I'm kind of hungry again though. Um, but that was fantastic. I loved it. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to Dimitri from Value of the Moment. Uh, he does, especially off the beaten path tours of Russia, but especially in Murmansk in the north of Russia. Uh, I'll have his information and his details in the description box below. Go, go check him out. Dimitri's an amazing guy and we had so much fun together. Thank you, Dimitri. And I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And also, if you haven't watched all the videos in this Russia series, we were in Moscow, had an amazing time. I'll have the videos in the description box that you can watch all the videos. 
We've been eating well in Russia. Russian food is fantastic. Um, and yeah, such a cool trip. Such an honor to be here. And just gonna take a few more breaths of fresh air before I go inside. Good night from Suzdal. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching.